and COVID-19 knows no boundaries. It disrupted everyday life and completely changed the norm. 17's Eliana Capian joins us live from downtown elementary this morning with more. Good morning, Eliana. Good morning, Alex. That's right. No one was safe from the effects of COVID-19, not even our local schools. On March 13th, 2020, local school leaders met to discuss the needs of our, of our students and decided to ultimately stay open as long as possible. Things quickly shifted. Timing was of the essence. I can tell you that it was like running um, a, I, I hate to use the word war, but it was a wartime effort. We had um, leaders across different districts and within our county office who came together. Barlow says they divided up the work into three task forces. First, how students would learn if they had to learn from home. Second, how connectivity was going to work. And third, how they were going to continue to feed their students. A huge reason that Kern County schools tried to stay open as long as possible is because most students in the county are considered socioeconomically disadvantaged. We divided up the work, so we had task force that were leading how to feed students and continue to ensure that over 80 sites were delivering food to about 120,000 students a day. We are the um, source of two to three meals a day, um, and we even provided meals for the weekend. Districts had to do a lot of legwork, transitioning away from the original paper packets to digital learning. We had to quickly address the digital divide, which was extremely and we found in our rural parts and in many of our socially economically disadvantaged parts of Kern County, we needed to either um, provide the hot spots or um, send and equip buses to be hot spots into different neighborhoods. The digital divide began to become more apparent and the districts had to acquire devices for students much sooner than other counties across California. The third pillar was go creating this uh, online learning platform called Canvas and Google and uh, coming together to create that curriculum that supports students and parent learning uh, during this pandemic. By the 17th and 18th of March, educators were packing up their classrooms and transitioning to online learning, though at the time they assumed it would only be for a short period of time. Even when it first happened, um, we thought, oh, this is going to be, you know, a few weeks, maybe something along those lines. It was absolutely shocking, but we decided to plan for the worst and hope for the best. And that's what's, um, what's held us uh, together through all of this. A year later, the pandemic has brought a lot of change accompanied by darkness. But Barlow says the pandemic has yielded some positivities. The pandemic drew a bright line under the inequities in our community. Um, so access to technology, food, uh, insecurity, shelter, and uh, as a result, it has impacted uh, the gap in academic learning. The one thing that's a silver lining in this, we found out as a result of the pandemic, just how important our education system is because it delivers so much more than academics. It focuses, as we've said, on that well-being of the entire child. Barlow says communication and the role of parents in a child's education has really improved through the pandemic. And it's also opened up a new opportunity for public schools to explore and provide education to students in new ways. So th there's some silver linings that are definitely coming out of this that will forever change education. Now, as vaccines continue to roll out and numbers continue to drop, educators are looking forward to return to in-person instruction and opening the gates to many schools across Kern County. In downtown Bakersfield, Ileana Capellan, 17 News.